Hey kids, welcome back to our Hope Studio. I'm Mr. Carlos. Hi, I'm Jack. So, we are done with our last series, which focused on God's greatest gift. Which is Jesus. That's right. Now, we'll start our series called Pet Project. Pet Project? What's that about? <laughs> well, think about it. What's the first thing parents say when you want a new pet? You got to feed it. <laughs> That's usually what they do say, but most of all, they tell you if you want a new pet, you gotta be responsible, which is how we are choosing to start this year. But what does responsibility mean? Showing that you can be trusted, which what is expected of you. And one of my responsibilities is to lead you in worship. Show us what you got, jump off your seats and follow our moves. Great job, guys. Worship makes me think of the story where David got a whole city to dance, giving glory to God. And Jesus would get huge crowds of people to listen to because of the way he taught. So sit back and relax and grab a snack because it's time for... Today, we're in the book of Luke, one of the four gospels that tell the story of Jesus. During his time on earth, Jesus traveled from town to town teaching people about God. He often told parables to show people what God is like. Parables are short stories about everyday objects and familiar situations, like baking bread, planting seeds, or hunting for a lost coin. Jesus was a master storyteller. His stories were easy to remember. They made people think from themselves and make connections. And that's where our story begins. I hope you're ready, because today's story is storied story within another story. Don't worry, I'll help you keep track. One day, Jesus was speaking to a crowd of people, teaching them about God. Suddenly, a man called out of the crowd. Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family property with me. Friend, who made me a judge or umpire between you? Watch out. Be on guard against wanting to have more and more things. Life is not made up of how much a person has. Now, here's where Jesus did something brilliant. Instead of giving a quick answer, Jesus used a powerful word picture. It went something like this. Once there was a rich man whose land produced a very large crop. Well, hey, sir, we're all set to bring the bumper crop in this year. Well, uh, look at all this food. Uh, hmm, I, I'm going to make a fortune of this. Uh, <laughs> harvest this crop at once. Uh, we're working on that, but there's a problem. A problem? You don't have enough barn space to store all that grain. I was thinking maybe you could share. Share? But it's all mine. Why do I got to share? Well, well, yes, it, it is. 
I know I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then, I can store all the grain for myself. Uh, okay. Yay me! Now, I have plenty of grain stored away for years to come. I can take it easy, relax, eat, drink, and party all night long. But as the rich man was thinking these thoughts, God spoke to him. You foolish man. Tonight I will take your life away from you. Then you will get what you have prepared for yourself. Oh no, man! This story, that's how it will be for whoever stores things away for themselves. But it's not rich in the sight of God. Oh! It's okay to have nice things, but our stuff should never get in the way of loving God and loving people. Everything we have comes from God. And one of the best ways we can show God's love is by sharing what we've been given. The end. Two stories for the price of one. Sometimes the best deal is to give instead of holding on to things. So what's our part of this story? Whether you have a little or a lot, it all belongs to God. We have the amazing job of using what we've been given to show God love to others. Oh, like sharing part of our lunch? It might even be sharing part of your allowance or your birthday money to buy food for people who need it. Yeah, there's this little food box right by my library. Anyone who can give food puts in, these, in this box and then anyone who needs it can get it. That's awesome. And we can share a lot more than just our stuff, like our time. You can share your time by choosing to read to your little brother or sister instead of playing your own game. That's nice. You can even share your story. Whoa, that seems a little big. <laughs> well, you'll tell your friends about the good things and the hard things in your life and how God has helped you, and it can encourage them too. So here's the thing, share what you have. Look guys, sharing what we have is the first step in loving others. When that becomes natural to us, God can do even greater things through us. So it's time for us to pray. Gather those hands, kids. God, thank you for everything we have, because we know it's all from you. Please show us how to give our time, our abilities, our stuff, our story, to show you love us to other people. We thank you in Jesus' name, amen. We'll see you next week, friends. Goodbye. Goodbye.